Hi everyone, uh, welcome to join our stage again. And then we are now starting the Hong Kong STP stage and then the Hong Kong STP showcase. We have our first company presenting. Um, guest speaker is Anson Jun from uh, Fun Park. He is the co-founder and CEO of Fun Park. Now I shall pass the stage to Anson. Anson, please. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Fun Park. Um, very uh, honored to be here to share a little bit of what we are doing and how we apply API uh, in our process uh, to to build a product and solution that uh, to feed uh, the corporate clients and as well as some uh, financial institutions. So uh, uh, a little bit introduction of Fun Park. I will spend uh, I, I always spend a few minutes to introduce uh, the company as a whole and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the products. And last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about you know how we apply API, um, uh, connecting through different kind of uh, stakeholder uh, in the ecosystem. So Fun Park is an online trade finance platform connecting corporates and funders. So we are a supply chain finance platform. Uh, focusing on you know um, receivable finance, um, 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 supply chain finance, as well as uh, trade asset based finance, which is also collateralized uh, the inventory for the financing. And uh, we also work with uh, quite a lot of uh, different financial institutions, including funds like uh, fixed income fund, credit fund, as well as commercial banks. Um, our proposition right now is to um, to work with quite a lot of uh, corporates so that we can originate, we build channel to originate assets from um, uh, different uh, importer and exporters. At the same time, we have our uh, internal core risk management system so that we uh, we ourselves will also do the credit underwriting. And then um, we populate um, the relevant credit as well as the asset information to the financial institutions that we work with. And then they are able to uh, finance those assets through our platforms. So uh, a little bit about um, the, the market proposition uh, on why we are doing what we are doing right now. So um, the the clients, the, the, the target audience that we are uh, uh, um, providing solution with are actually those underbank and unbank SMEs. And then um, as this page tell you, uh, in, uh, according to a figure stick uh, uh, by World Bank in 2017, uh, globally, the, um, the, the funding gap between what the traditional banks could provide and also what the SMEs need in terms of you know uh, maintaining and uh, growing the business is around 2.1 to 2.6 trillion US dollar funding gap globally. And a majority and a very large part of it is actually in Asia. So we are actually helping uh, to fill in the gap by um, bridging the capital uh, from the financial institution to the SMEs. And then uh, particularly why we do um, trade finance is that uh, in those uh, uh, 2.1 to 2.6 trillion US dollar, this kind of funding gap, uh, actually a lot of uh, funding needs is arising from um, uh, the working capital need along the supply chain. So this is also the uh, uh, research paper by McKinsey um, showing us you know, how much uh, the financeable payable, which is also the receivable um, globally, um, in 2015, and then they we also you know project you know the um, the, the financeable payable amount increase every day, every year. So the fundamental um, solution and purpose of Fun Part is to help SME credit worthy SME grow, and how we do it is to uh, build a supply chain trade finance platforms that. Use, um, bridging the capital market uh, funding to those uh, corporates. So how we do it? Um, so um, what we doing right now is that we are putting ourselves uh, immersed in the supply chain. So um, we 
uh, to our platforms, we actually connect our solution to uh, the stakeholders uh, in the ecosystem, including but not uh, limited to you know suppliers and buyers and some service provider along uh, uh, along the supply chain, including um, those uh, logistic company and warehouse uh, companies, as well as some payment company as well. So uh, if we divide it into if we, if we divide you know the the asset or the uh, the point of finance in supply chain, uh, we can divide it into four parts. So the last mile would be the receivable, which is also um, the products that uh, 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 most of the financial institution they uh, have a better appetite with. But before you know uh, the products are sold and then become receivable, and then it's his inventory. So um, the inventory financing is something traditional banks uh, rather have less appetite with. But uh, Funpa also think that um, by having the real-time, right-time, all-the-time data uh, through API connected with some WMS, uh, warehouse management system, so that we can also um, to an analyze you know, the, uh, the stock uh, information uh, the custom information, as well as you know, uh, the, the the valuation of the stock on a, a real time basis, and before that, uh, it is also the purchase order financing. Um, by analyzing the supply chain information, that we are able to analyze the you know the conversion rate from purchase order to receivable, uh, and uh, like for example the dilution uh, information, etc. So that we can also tap into. The purchase, uh, the purchase order financing solution, and uh, the the most you know uh, interesting part will be the projections. So based on you know the information that we collect along the supply chain, we can also project how much capital, what can capital they need before they actually need it. So um, we focus on our solution along you know the supply chain as well as the four parts uh, arising, uh, the four you know uh, uh, key point of um, 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 the financing need. So I would like to talk a little bit into detail, uh, in detail on you know uh, what kind of solution that we are providing and how we uh, apply um, um, API connectivity um, with our counterparties. So um, the first product, I mean, I would like to share a little bit about is, is uh, the visual financing, or people call it in invoice financing. So this product, the characteristic of the product is. Um, Usually, the, the, no matter it's the inbound or outbound, but the, the channel that we build is actually focused on the suppliers. So it's a supply-centric model that um, uh, the working customers or uh, the typical SMEs um, usually supply. They will walk into FunPass platform so that um, uh, uh, we can analyze you know, their information uh, with their upstream, uh, the, with the buyer, and also their uh, supply. And then the products that we've, we, we, we are offering is the um, resource financing products so that the suppliers, they can um, um, get the cash in advance based on the receivable they have with their buyers. So uh, for this particular products that um, we, uh, uh, we will analyze information, including but not, not limited to um, as part of their financial information, and the trade patterns uh, along the supply chain, as well as getting information uh, from the payment system. So for this particular uh, products, uh, we work closely with some payment company, um, especially for a supplier in the e-commerce uh, space, because um, the payment companies uh, uh, by obtaining the you know the payment track record uh, uh, through. The payment company we are we are able to to analyze the more real time uh, sales revenue information as well as their sales patterns uh, projections in the future, and then um, uh, in in the market there are some payment company they are also um, able to offer solution that uh, to uh, to provide a payment control with the financier. Uh, through the API connectivity as well. So once um, the supplier get repayment from the buyers through the payment company, uh, we will get the notification. 
as far as we are able you know, to uh, provide uh, based on the trigger that we can provide instructions to the payment company for the payment control as well. And then for that, uh, it would be part of our risk mitigation. So for this particular supply uh, supplier centric model, uh, we work with more uh, uh, with some service provider uh, on the sales and uh, payment track record information uh, through the API. Uh, the second product uh, we call supply financing or uh, 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 supply chain finance, uh, it is more of buyer centric. So um, uh, other financiers, they also call it like uh, reverse factoring uh, products. So um, um, since we launched our sewer finance products, uh, we're getting um, a more and more you know, uh, access to um, the mid-size buyers. And then, um, uh, currently, you know, the majority of the buyers that we are working with are uh, the e-commerce platforms. Um, so the e-commerce platforms, they have um, two major kind of business model. So the first kind of business model, it is a pure platform operations so that they allow the merchants to open shop uh, or um, yeah, the online shop on their uh, e-commerce platform so that their, uh, the retail customers, they can buy the products directly. Uh, but on the uh, supply finance or supply chain finance part that we are offering, we work with their, their uh, the trading business so that um, some buyers, uh, the e-commerce platforms, they will buy from the supplier directly uh, so that they're taking their own products and inventory risk. So for this, we are able to uh, offer the, the supply chain finance. But uh, I think uh, the characteristic of why we focus on e-commerce is that um, a lot of e-commerce platforms, they have a higher and better uh, technology capability than traditional uh, uh, trading uh, companies. So that uh, for the information that we obtain from the buyers, we are able to uh, connect it with their ERP and all their own procurement system through API so that we get the information instantly. Um, and for this particular models, uh, we focus a lot on the credibility of the buyers um, um, we we do uh, credit underwriting on the buyers as well as obtain further um, credit um, uh, credit uh, comfort from the trade credit insurance company. But uh, instead of relying on buyers um, manual confirmation or the manual verification, that could be. Um, affected by or uh, could be uh, could be manip manipulated by uh, some of their staff for misbehavior. So uh, we also set our own trigger internally so that when the information comes in, uh, if there is any abnormality, we can we can also uh, trigger the post drawdown uh, monitoring and also the uh, respective actions. So uh, all in all, I think. Uh, um, oh, you know, I think um, the way that we look at um, um, the API connectivity application in supply chain is how we appreciate the digital data that originated from our, our stakeholders, including the supplier, the buyers, and the services provider that uh, actually uh, uh, involved in the, in, 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 in the supply chain. Uh, that's pretty much that um, I would like to share today. Um, so, Kavi, uh, I, I assume there is a, a Q and A section, or um, is it? Is there any questions from the audience? Like to know a little bit more about uh, fun part and also our solution? Yeah, I think I will um, <clears throat> wait to see if there are any questions on the floor. So um, everyone, if you have questions to Ensign, I think you can reach out to Ensign or you can um, drop your questions here. And before we have our questions, uh, maybe I have a question for Ensign, if you wouldn't mind. So um, yeah. I know your company has very strong growth, um, uh, have a very strong track record. So in terms of future development, which area do you think will be the focus uh, for your company? Uh, thanks, uh, Kavi. So, um, in fact, um, so we are a platform operator. So we focus the growth on asset 
as well as the, uh, 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 the liquidity that we can obtain from the financial institutions. Um, I, I actually spend quite a lot of time on how we are obtaining information uh, with with a lot of like asset originator. I mean, the the, the, the asset provider uh, by having integration with the system. But in fact, we also um, right now work with banks so that um, part of the information that we obtain, we can actually uh, uh, provide those information to the banks after we have. Uh, conducted you know the credit underwriting and also the analysis so uh, this is something that i i forgot to mention that the api connectivity not only on asset side the, the sme side but also with the fis uh but uh get back, getting back to your questions kathy um i think um right now our focus uh you, 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 uh, maybe you know after you heard of uh, you know some of the sharings uh you already understand that uh we, we actually focus quite a lot on uh the e-commerce space um, there are three reasons for that. First of all, is that um, um, the market potential of e-commerce actually is is very huge. Uh, last year, uh, uh, in China alone, for FMCG, uh, the uh, the GMVs, the the uh, the gross merchandise value uh, purely in in two thousand and nineteen in China is around twelve trillion uh, RMB, which is around uh, one point five trillion US dollar. So it is a huge market, and uh, we're expecting the, the annual growth rate is around 20 to 30% per year. Um, so um, uh, this, this is one of the reasons why we focus on e-commerce. And the second reason is that uh, e-commerce platform, uh, by nature, they are uh, a tech company as well. So their technology capability uh, in terms of integrating uh, with other companies is higher than the traditional companies and industry. So when we are in the process and then be part of the change that uh, the industry want to do is uh, digitalizing supply chain, then e-commerce is by nature one of the uh, the top choice of industry that we could focus on. So uh, that's the second reason. And last but not least is for the risk mitigation. So um, um, because of um, the the readiness or the, the more availability of uh, instant digital data that we can analyze uh, no matter it's just the, on, from the buyer side on the supplier side on the uh, the, 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 the the operating uh, situation we are able to mitigate part of the risk that we believe the traditional industry without uh, uh, instant uh, data providing uh, we are able. We are in a better position to mitigate those risks. So that's the the three reasons that we focus on e-commerce, and this is also the direction that we are heading to as well. Mm, it's very interesting to know that um one of your focus will be uh, e-commerce. So in terms of um, expansion, how how are you expanding uh, beyond Hong Kong, or how do you consider the plan? Uh, we we are headquartered in Hong Kong, so um, we have a team of around sixty people in Hong Kong right now. So most of our team members are in Hong Kong, but uh, we actually doing quite a lot of cross border business, meaning that uh, we are serving uh, quite a lot of importer. Uh, those um, uh, buying overseas and and actually selling to Chinese customers, and we also serving those exporter. Uh, with products that manufacture by uh, I mean in, in China and exporting to US or Europe so um, we are in a hub of you know we are in, in, in the trading and financing hub uh, Hong Kong but we actually serving quite a lot of um, uh, uh, training company that set up in Hong Kong and oversee but uh, managed by uh, Chinese entity or Chinese people, so um, so by nature, uh, 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 the organic growth will definitely be in um, China. Uh, but uh, because of the background, because of the, the the experience that we have, even though we are serving quite a lot of Chinese customer, when I say Chinese customer, they are the Chinese people managing the companies, but they are having you know overseas entities. Uh, mm. We are able to do a lot of. Uh, uh, trade finance for the cross-border activities. So we will continue to expand to uh, China market for this particular uh, cross-border trades. Mm, I see. So I think, uh, thank you so much for your presentation today. And we are, 
very glad to have you on the stage. Um, so um, I think it's uh, about time that we will wrap up this section and then we will start the next one. So thank you, Anson. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.